Hi, and welcome to my channel, The Great Jelly Library. And I am so glad you could join me. I always look forward to your visit. Today, we are going to talk about books, books, and more books. You know it. I am currently reading the Paris Apartment. If you have not read this, I highly recommend picking this book up. It is a tremendously fun read. I am having an exceptional good time reading this. I am 85 pages deep and the chapters are super, like I said, super short, super easy, super breezy. Uh, it's about a girl named Jess who is going to Paris to visit her half-brother. They share the same mother, uh, two different fathers. And uh, she's kind of looking for a change in her life. So she takes her brother up on that offer and she goes to Paris. And um, when she arrives, her brother immediately has gone missing. And um, she's kind of questioning the neighbors, asking kind of uh, like, probing around, seeing what she could find out, and she's not getting too far uh, with that. I, like I said, I'm 85 pages into this, and every single page that I turn is a delight. I am for sure enjoying this book. The next book I would like to bring to your attention is The Phantom of the Opera by Gaston LaRue. Has anybody read this book? I certainly have not, but look at that. Does, does that say, I'm trying to get it where there's not a glare, but I don't think that that is gonna work. But anyways, is that a fun looking book or what? I'm gonna take these off because I just, all you see is just a, a reflection, a glare, a glare. Not good, so. Plus, I don't need them, only to see far away. All right, dig this. I did the audible version of this book, and I hung on every word. It is narrated exquisitely. I am heavily into books and nutrition. Those two are my hangups. And I read this book, Hooked by Michael Moss, about two years ago. I did the audible version of it. And then one day I was in the store and I came across it. And I just love the cover of this book. Love the cover. And it's just as fun to me. Plus, the knowledge that I gained from doing the audible version of this really brought this book home for me. Yeah, brought this book home for me. So I thought I would really like to own this book and have it on my bookshelf, except for I didn't want to pay the asking price, uh, which is retail value, of course, $28. So, um, here we are two years later. I found it on eBay rather cheaply. I think I paid $12 with uh, free shipping. So, we brought this book home to, to um, join its brothers and sisters among the shelves. Also, I should make mention that Michael Moss also is the author of salt sugar fat which i also did the audible version of and that too is a phenomenal book if you don't know anything about nutrition but you would like to somehow some way get yourself into a better eating pattern or possibly try and improve some of your health issues these two books i highly recommend 
it is absolutely true when they say when grocery shopping shop the parameter of your store there's no need to visit the inner aisles after you read these two books you will there's some just like some kind of um you, you know um how do i say some kind of switch that gets flicked on in your brain and then it's hard to ignore that once you know what you know it's hard to ignore so when they say ignorance is bliss it truly is and for a long time i will say i was guilty of my ignorance and i was living a life of bliss but it wasn't until i started diving into the world of nutrition when i started to actually investigate food and its effects on us i found it incredibly hard to ignore that information so here i am 10 years into my journey um still seeking information. I feel you can never get enough information when it comes to food and nutrition. And although it's very confusing, you have to kind of investigate and then lean on what makes the most sense in your mind. There's probably a million and one ways to go about this. But I believe there's only one right way. And this book and Salt, Sugar, Fat are two tremendously informational books that can help you figure it out. So I highly, highly recommend this book. All right, so I recently took a trip to Whole Foods for the very first time in my life. And in my shopping experience, I picked up this book, The Complete Plant-Based Diet, A Guide and Cookbook to Enjoy Eating More Plants, J.L. Fields. Well, I don't have a problem eating more plants. It's what I do. Um... I liken myself to the animals in the forest where they don't kind of need lasagna and ziti and burgers and hot dogs and tuna fish sandwiches. They're perfectly content eating the herbs that nature provides. You know, most people have their like five go-to meals anyways, right? So I just choose to make mine plant-based. I feel fantastic, better than I have ever felt in my life. And although I struggle with my thyroid issues, I have energy out the wazoo. And there is not one single thing in this world that would persuade me not to eat this way. I have a ton of plant-based books, but you can never have enough because variety is the spice of life. And I just, if there's something new out there that I can incorporate into my world, then you know I'm gonna do that. So, so that's what I purchased at Whole Foods. All right, then I took a trip to the lovely bookstore. Here's how I feel about bookstores versus Audible versus Kindle. They are all good in their own way. They all have a great perspective about them, except for I lean very little towards the Kindle for the simple fact that 
I sit and look at a computer all day long. And I think the last thing my eyes need is another glowing screen in front of them. So I tend to do the book for many, many reasons. One, simply because I'm in love with them. And two, the audible version. Now, I know a lot of you cannot stay focused on an audible version of a book. But speaking for myself, I love them. They are so helpful in allowing me to accomplish my goals. And I find a lot of times the narrator does a fantastic job way better than I ever could conjure anything up in my mind and bring forth to help this story come to life. So I, I love the Audible version. And for those of you who say, if you Audible a book, it's not actually reading a book, I disagree with that. Because if we went head to head, you would have the same knowledge that I have from you reading and me listening. Two different paths, same result. And a lot of times, like I said, the audible version may have led you down a more realistic, fun, adventurous path. So, okay. Now, as far as a bookstore goes, I love me a bookstore because as soon as I walk in that door, I am very much about the aesthetics. I love the scenery. I love the organization. I love the cleanliness. I love the smells going on in the air. And I love the escapism so many things about a bookstore. Once upon a time, I read a book about a local chocolate store, commercial chocolate store in a residential area. And it was there for like 75 years. And throughout those 75 years, things change as they always do. And the people who would patron this store would get a little tied up with soccer practice for the kids and PTA and suppers and whatever. And so they just didn't make a priority to visit this store. Okay, so here we go. Busy, busy, busy. Well, within that busyness, the chocolate store found that it could no longer hold its own and survive the times. So, inevitably, it had to close its doors. And then, a wail of moans and cries from the townspeople. How's that for drama? Um... Oh, no, not my favorite chocolate store. It couldn't be. However will I survive without my favorite chocolate store? And so one by one, the townspeople would enter the store and say, I just can't believe that you're closing. Oh, my, woe is me. Whatever am I going to do? Where will I get my chocolate? To which the shop owner replied, well, if you would have just shopped here, I wouldn't have had to close my doors. So that is 100% how I feel about a bookstore. Yes, I can get it cheaper on eBay. Yes, I can shop uh, Amazon. Yes, there are um, probably a million or one places where I can get my books from. And I, I like to spread the wealth, but... I will always make a bookstore my priority because I love the atmosphere. 
And I appreciate, I appreciate that it is there for me. And I do not want to turn a blind eye to my blessings. And so, take my money. And that's how I feel about a bookstore. So then when I walk into this lovely smelling bookstore, these are the books that I got to choose. And for those of you out there saying, oh my God, she bought more books. My reply to that would be, heck yes, I did. It's what I do. So long as I am alive and so long as I am earning a living, I am always going to buy it book. My, I thought I would step out of my realm with my love of hardcovers. And I only bought one hardcover out of one, two, three, four, five, six. Six books, one hardcover. Life's Lessons from the Ocean, Soothing Wisdom from the Sea. Written by Richard Harrington, illustrated by Annie Davidson. So I would like some life lessons from some sea creatures because I believe in my heart that sometimes they can teach us more than human beings can. Now, dig these books. When you go and buy a beverage in the bookstore, they have a feature book for $5. And so how could you not? How could you not? One, two, three, four, five. How could you not? When No One Is Watching, a thriller. Alyssa Cole. The New York Times best-selling author. Alifair Burke. I was knocked over by this intense psychological thriller that doesn't let go until the final page. Hello. All right, here we go. Excited about this one. Natalie Haynes, Pandora's Jar. Okay, here we go. Oh, here we go. Almond by Wan Young Sun. I don't know anything about it. It just spoke to me. And that's all I needed. So, Viola Shipman, The Secret of Snow. So, oftentimes, I find myself in a heavy read. And when I find myself in that situation, I do like to balance it out. And henceforth, something like this is, how do you say back in high school, required reading in my mind. It balances the stuff out. The last book, Rena Rosner, The Light of the Midnight Stars. How is that for a cover? All right, so I feel like today was possibly a lot of good books. Very little information on most of the books. And that's all right. Because if you're anything like me, you don't always need to know what that book is about. Sometimes the cover or the title is enough to spark a fire in your mind and make you obtain that book. So I would just like to say, Mary Beth. You have been so impressive in reaching out to me and telling me the books that 
I have been recommending and you have been reading. And it's per near almost all of them, or at least a great portion of them. So I would just like to say, yay, Mary Beth, good for you with just being a reading machine and reading them faster than I can even do a video. So um, I know you have asked me to recommend another book. And um, although I am working on the Paris apartment right now, I feel like I kind of know your style and you love those deep dives into the unbelievable. Um, so I am going to do my best to come up with a book for you to um, work on next. She is working on Slew Foot and I haven't even begun it. I am taking a recommendation from MJ from the channel Reading This Life, who suggested that I read Slewfoot in the month of May, because May is the month for mayhem. And I am going to take her up on that suggestion. And that's when I will conquer that book. Meanwhile, Mary Beth has 100 pages to go, and she is finished with that. Oh, I got to step my game up, but I've just been a lot bit busy and I, I'm trying to dedicate every free moment I can to my reading because I do have a hundred book reading goal and I am way, way, way behind. All right, guys. So I'm going to wrap it up there until we meet again. Know that I love you. I wish you well. And I cannot wait until we can spend some more time together. Bye-bye.